to me, setting a realistic goal is something that has to be um, has to be thought out. It can't be a set a, a goal as you go through the property. Uh, because what I find with that is, is I find that I find that a lot of the times when that is done, that there's no um, there's no design, there's no oversight of the entire parcel. Uh, of the contour and what it has to offer. What I find is, I find people, um, you can use the term chasing your tail, uh, or, or just adding, doing too many habitat improvements over the property um, over X amount of period. So the why, where, and when. So if your goal is to, is to purchase the, the property or take your property and make it a whitetail um, haven, a whitetail sanctuary for yourself, then you have the why handled. Also in that, just like we talked about, we touched on the real estate side of it. Um, if you're going to market it to uh, uh, whitetail hunters, uh, someone that is going to appreciate the value that you've uh, put into it, um, then, then you've also handled the why. Uh, but that's something that needs to be set ahead of time, and to me, that's a habitat goal. Uh, not just the work itself, as far as what you're going to do for the year, uh, is to stretch that out down the road and set that goal, set that very strong precedence of a goal, uh, knowing that that could possibly uh, happen or not happen. Uh, that totally changes the starting point of your uh, of your design. It, it totally changes the, the starting point of the outcome. The worst thing that you can possibly do is go into an area that you want to create a bedding area, and you you don't you're not you're not uh, keeping into mind your trip your transition court your transition um, areas. You're not keeping in mind your corridors, you're not keeping in mind your points of impact, and you create so much um, diverse habitat, kind of a monoculture, I guess, if you will, of, of too much in the wrong places, and then you can't hunt it. And that ties into where, um, that ties into the where part of it, and also the why. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to overdo uh, certain, certain hinge cuts, let's say. What I find is I'm up around 40 or 50 percent of my properties have something to, to pertain to to that. Now, if you took hinge cutting out of there, maybe the percentage is a little bit lower, but some kind of tree work, and, and that is why this is so important of setting that goal ahead, is if there is any marketable timber in the value, uh, you, you should be able to use that to your advantage, and then also keep in mind that, uh, that goal of having that uh, TSI or it's strictly being just a whitetail property down the road. So now we take in the when part of this uh, three piece number one. When I have clients that uh, you know own their parcels for, for years and just uh, religiously hunt it the, the way that they feel that they um, have, have always hunted it or best uh, suits them. And uh, you know they might be a, a 20 year project before they reach out to someone such as me and um, to try to, whether that's a change in hands through the family, whether that's a, a grandson or a, a nephew that's hunting more now uh, that wants to try to bring that, uh, you know, that potential to the surface of the farm, a lot of times that's what, what we see. Now, on the other hand, I have a lot of new clients. I just uh, have a gentleman, a couple gentlemen this year that have just purchased their uh, properties and have reached out and it's a clean slate and, and uh, they, other than walking it when they purchased it, haven't set foot on it. So either way that you look at it, uh, to me, it's, it's a starting point. And that's something that I try to um, strive in in this business is really reaching out to folks and really uh, you know resonating with you that I've been there, I've had properties before that I didn't know what to do and what where to turn and there's no worse feeling in the world of, of uh, having a, well, there is, and I'll touch on that in a second, but having a property that you uh, that you don't know what to do with, and you've waited years and years and years to have, you know, save that money and, and search and find that piece of property that you think that you can, you know, really have a potential of harvesting mature deer off from, and not knowing what to do with it. And, you know, a lot of folks can go down the road of, um, you know, uh, food plots, but even then, it's a it's an issue where, you have to know where those plots are at. Like I've said before in my, my, my uh, you know, past videos, guys, and I'll say it again probably a hundred thousand more times, is if you only are going to do food plots on your property and you're not going to tie those food plots to a design, then I'd rather you not have food plots at all. Or uh, only 
habitat improvements outside of food plots. And that's pretty strong, you know, that's a pretty strong message to a lot of folks. And I'm, you know, and I'm okay with that because there's a lot of power to be had with that. It's because that all ties back to having a, uh, having, setting goals and having that goal work. And you have to know up front, are you going to do this yourself? Uh, are you going to start a design? Are you going to walk this by yourself? And you're really going to feel when you, you, you get done, done with it, um, that you, your chances going into fall are... Uh, every time that you walk into the property to, to hunt are 80 to 90 percent uh, success rates and usually the answer to folks when they get that process done or go to start that process uh, usually that answer is they don't have that confidence so to, to touch on something real quick here that point that I was making of there isn't there isn't a worse feeling in the world um, when you have a property and you need to design it there is a worse feeling and that worse feeling is this that worse feeling is getting into that first week of October, or if you're if your opener's in September, and uh, getting to that point, and not knowing which stand you should be in, uh, because pertaining to the habitat and the time of the year, and not knowing how to get in and out of that, and having this uh, this 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 uh, conflict of interest uh, from the outside of your property looking in, that's the worst feeling in the world. I don't think that the design. Uh, shines on, on so much of his, an importance as I like to see through. So that's just one piece of the puzzle. If you're going to reach out to anybody, make sure that you, you reach out to uh, someone that best fits your property that you really feel is going to dig deep. Uh, not, not the best, uh, you know, for your dollar, not the cheapest guy, maybe not, not the most expensive guy, um, but someone that really digs deep and finds the interior root cause of the property and can uh, can bring that through uh, that, that best, fit, best fits you. Setting these goals for yourself is a very important is a very important process. There are a lot of people that uh, that I may, maybe worked on their properties that you know contact me through social media, whatever that case is, that do all of these steps of whitetail habitat improvement themselves. And that's great. I do not frown on that at all. It's because uh, the properties that you're doing yourselves, are going to at some point benefit my clients or myself down the road in an area to hunt. We're all on this. We're all on this, uh, you know, team together. The way I look at it, and even though some of us might do different improvements, um, we are improving the whitetail uh, land across the entire, a lot across the entire state. A high-pressure state like Michigan, for example, is a perfect thing. We lack so much in habitat that it's going to take a vast amount of of uh, habitat improvements along with a whole bunch of uh, um, uh, driven management skills in the state to bring it to, to be what it can be um, and that that's a piece of the puzzle that I highly recommend that you know don't frown on someone down the road uh, you know doing these habitat improvements look at it as an improvement to your area so at the end, guys, this is just three points that kind of always you know step out when I start talking to the clients about um, setting goals and the, re and the reason is, is just being realistic. The real part of realistic with your goals is huge. Um, it has to be, it has to, to, to fit your property. If your property um, doesn't, isn't a property that needs uh, hinge cuts, maybe your property needs a bunch of mulching. You know, it's, um, it's either feast or famine in this, what I, what I see on a lot of these pro properties. And the biggest, the biggest thing is, is just being realistic getting uh, a process set in place, a design set in place with your scouting that you have done with your hunting, your field notes, and then tying all this together and having a goal set in, in mind that you're going to either do it yourself or you're going to hire a service such as mine to do that to, as far as putting it onto the design and then you're going to do this process over. You're going to do it all at once. You're going to do it all over five years. You're going to do it all over 10 years. But having that goal is powerful. Setting Setting goals directly relates to um, to the outcome of your property, the the high success return on investment. Uh, setting goals on your property all 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 ties to that, and that comes with family. That comes with keeping uh, the budget uh, budget friendly, as I like to refer to it as in the family. That it all it all pertains to that, and you have to be realistic because if you dump all of your heart and soul and money and throw everything at the fence and not have a concrete design and goals set in place, 
you're gonna be you're gonna be disappointed and then that just it extends your season so so f uh, much out of the uh, the reach of a lot of folks across the country and so setting that goal has to be realistic has to be within within your parameters maybe not the guy down the road maybe not the guy uh, that's in Kansas or the guy that's in uh, Iowa doing this or the guy that's in Illinois uh, the, these have to pertain to you and your property and then the outcome it's a mental stability process that the outcome of this is because you started this process with the, with the right fundamentals and then you can be able to, to reap the benefits if you go into this just throwing this all at the window and and starting right now with a chainsaw, the first time you enter your woods is with a chainsaw, you're going about this the wrong way. So I hope some of these uh, you know, resonate with you guys. There's, like I said, there's a whole a much longer list that we could add to this. These are just three. And the, uh, the message at the, the end of this uh, video today, guys, is just is simply that. Have a goal, a realistic goal set in mind before you enter your, your property to start uh, whitetail habitat improvements.